Hello friends, welcome to a very unusual video for my channel. I never thought I would make a video on this subject for various reasons. Number one, I didn't think many people were interested in it anymore. I didn't know how active uh, the discussion was on the subject. And to be honest, it doesn't really belong on my channel. But I've made two videos which I felt were actually valuable, where I added information that at least was not discussed in our community. And in, in one video, I actually created, introduced new things that are not even in the research. One of them was on how to improve sexual uh, drive acutely. And one was on how to improve erectile quality. This video is about the subject of penile enhancement or penis enlargement. It's usually called PE. That's what we're going to call it from now on. PE has been going on for at least since the 60s, maybe the 70s. The way it originally started with, was with something called a pump. We're going to talk more about that in a little bit. Why I'm making this video is specifically because in the last video I made, which was about erectile quality, which in the PE community we call EQ. I made a video about EQ and a lot of people responded mentioning the bath meat and various penis enlargement stuff and then I realized there is still a lot of misinformation in this world. I happen to be, have a lot of expertise on this subject. I assume I probably know as much about the subject as anyone on earth because I was a member of the largest uh, forum on the subject which was called Thunder's Place for a number of years, specifically between the years 2006 to 2010 uh, or so. I was a major poster on the board. I tried every single experiment that was ever that I ever came across. I read extensively on the board and I had uh, by the end very specific uh, ideas of what was effective, what was not effective. And not, not only that, but I stopped doing all of that stuff completely for the last 10 years. So I can tell you for sure what's permanent, what's not permanent, what worked, how did it work, and I can tell you all of that stuff from the background. The reason I'm doing this honestly is not for views. This is gonna get demonetized, it's not gonna, and by the way, just so you guys know, once something gets demonetized, the YouTube algorithm doesn't up, uh, doesn't uh, like push, you know, upregulate it. So, <laughs> from biology, but it doesn't upregulate it anymore, the video. So basically this, this gets demonetized. Not many people will see it, but I'm doing this for my subscribers to save you guys some time that I wish I could have been saved. Okay, if I was your age, I assume most of you guys are in your early 20s or in your late teenage years. Now, I want to say something up front just for the, for the sake of saying it. Not everyone interested in penis enlargement has a small penis. In fact, most of the people that I came across on Thunder's Place, because the sizes are always discussed because people are constantly measuring themselves and, you know, it's just like if you're weightlifting, you're measuring your weights, your biceps, so on. Most of the people didn't start off, you know, there, there were very few micro penises or people below the length of like four inches or, and there were people with five inches and so on, but very few, you know, there were some, by the way, that there was one guy that had a micro penis that gained almost four inches in length, which was very, very unusual, which is, I mean, undocumented, but we can talk about that later. I, I, I believe that the, well, actually, I, I don't, I don't believe that story. I believe that that was a hormonal thing and it was stolen maybe from uh, a publication or something. But anyway, the point is, being interested in penis enlargement does not mean that you have a small penis. Most people that are interested in bodybuilding or interested in improving their brains, improving their lives, want to improve everything about themselves. Now, most men don't have an issue with their penis size themselves, but what happens is they want to satisfy a woman or they want to be the most macho that they can be. And unfortunately, penis size has become a, a, a measure of this in society, both among women and men. So a lot of men are trying to have the largest penises that they can have, especially if they're very sexually active and especially if they're dating often. So, um, and you know, it is, it is sort of a relevant metric, huh? by the way, because for example, if you happen to be 11 years old and you took a, an aromatase inhibitor, not only would you grow a little bit taller, but you would also likely end up with a larger penis. And the same thing would happen, would happen if your androgenic signaling was, particularly DHT, was higher in those years with estradiol being lower. This is well known. This is actually how doctors treat this. But you can only treat it while the child is growing up. You can't after they're an adult, usually. Usually. So, anyway, let me tell you guys a little bit about the background of Thunder's Place. Uh, I, how should I do this? So first of all, I want to tell you guys about what to watch out for. Thunder's Place, by the way, doesn't exist anymore. I think it's still online, but I don't know where the community has moved to. I've been out of it for 10 years. 
not much new can have developed so you know you could go find wherever the community is and if you guys know where it is comment down below so people see it could be reddit i don't know where it is now it's definitely not thunders but thunders used to be the big place and there were some very famous members there for example one that most people know is bib b-i-b another one uh, i'm forgetting the guy who never left his house but claimed to have gained five inches in length or something like that there was big gertha who used to post a lot for a couple of years anyway there were there were a bunch of uh, well-known members who introduced a lot of ideas and claimed that they had major gains and what I wanted to tell you guys is uh, there were two kinds of people there there were con men who were making money and there were people with psychological problems who wanted to develop respect in a virtual online community by lying about their progress these people are the same people that used to be on the bodybuilding forums that used to say that they're 250 pounds or whatever like you know, I can remember names, but I don't, I don't want to mention them. But there were people like that who probably were skinny kids in their rooms that were lying about what they were actually accomplishing, right? And never posting pictures. So those guys never posted pictures, by the way, of themselves. So there was on Thunder's Place, I know it's weird as a guy, you, you know, if you're, a, if you're a heterosexual guy, you don't really want to see other people's penises. But people used to post pictures to show how to do certain things and stuff like that and, or to show evidence of major change. And of course, Bib, who was the biggest gainer of all, never did that, even though he made a company selling hangers. I'll talk about hangers in a second. And even though he made the company to sell it, and in fact, he said he hired his son to help him build them, and this was like their full-time thing, he would still not show, a, even an after picture, evidencing the fact that he had reached 11 inches or so. Now, um, because of some articles in the medical literature showing major size increases because of priapisms, which we've discussed in a previous video, some people thought that this could actually happen. Basically, uh, it's, I'm, I'm sure this video is going to be very long-winded. You guys are going to have questions and I should probably make follow-up videos. But let me try to stay on topic here. What I want to tell you about is first, there's two kinds of cons. There are people trying to make money and there are people trying to make a reputation because they are... They are sick people that are, don't have many friends, don't have a social circle, so on. The second thing I want to tell you about is what is really possible. What can you do with PE exactly? Number one, you can change your flaccid size. So some people are called growers and some people are called showers. So a grower usually is somebody that has less connective tissue in their penile tissue, but more uh, vascular tissue. So somebody like that will have a bigger difference in the size between their flaccid penis and their um, uh, erect penis. Those people can experience much uh, larger flaccid sizes if they do certain things. Specifically, what has the biggest impact on this is what's called an all-day stretcher or an ADS. If you ever do purchase one because of this purpose, and that should be the only reason you purchase it, unless you... There could be one other reason, I'll tell you one in a second. Um, you, you should probably try to find one with a vacuum seal that seals on the glands at the end and that stretches you downward. It will not cause permanent length increases at the actual penis, but it may, this is the other reason to use it other than the faucet side, it may um, sort of cement the stretching that you've done to uh, connective tissue that's at the top, I forgot the word of it, but at the top of the base of the penis which we're going to discuss in a little bit. So that could be another reason. So the all-day stretchers, they do increase flaccid size, but this is not permanent. You stop doing it for even six months and it'll go back to normal. But you can get to a point where the flaccid is so long that you have problems, you know, sitting down to pee and so on. This has happened to all of us. So this really does work, certainly. Second thing I want to tell you about, depending on the structure of your penis, which what means is this. So if you think about it from the side, so say the base of your, of, of like say your penis is coming out from here and there's a base there's a tendon connecting it here depending on how tightly your penis is actually connected you may be able to stretch out that t i mean it may not be a tendon maybe a ligament i don't know but stretch out that connective tissue you may be able to stretch it out more than somebody else so if somebody already has it stretched out they may only gain a quarter of an inch most people can gain a half inch in length but if you have one that is particularly, you know, it's, it's holding a lot of the, of the bottom of your penis in, uh, tighter to your body, you may be able to gain, you know, I guess, I mean, uh, you, could, you could gain a, an inch and, I mean, the only thing I know for sure is 1.75 inches. And that's because 
I did that. But but you can certainly gain that much. I don't think you can gain more than two inches. I think everybody on that forum, and there used to be a thread called the biggest gainers story, something like that. I think that everybody saying more than three inches was lying. I do think so. So I just want you to understand that. Now that length gain will be semi-permanent, depending on how long you do it, how long you stretch that out, and then how long you keep it stretched afterwards. So probably if you don't do anything for 10 years, you'll maintain about half of the development, the whatever you extended. But you're not, you're not growing the length of your penis. You're just extending that connective tissue. This will, by the way, also cause your penis not to point upwards, but instead point a little bit lower. You know, it's not because of the blood flow or something like that. It's because the, the, the connective tissue is actually looser and not holding it as tightly. So that's the second thing you can do. The third thing that you can actually do is called uh, gel king. And what gel king can produce, now gel king can do good things for you. But what I'm, what I'm talking about here is actually something called fibrosis in the penis. You can develop fibrosis, for example, mostly in the corpus cavernosum, which is the top part of it. And this often happens to jelkers where at the end of their penis, it'll get a bit wider. And that's a little bit fibrosis, the deposition of scar tissue in the penis. This is not something you really want. In fact, it's something you should try to avoid, which is why I don't ever recommend jelking for any of my clients. Most of my clients happen to be interested in this subject for some reason. So the third thing I wanted to mention, uh, so you can gain fibrosis and then you can gain actual what they call girth, which is the circumference in your penis. Now, how can you gain actual girth? Basically, uh, there are two mechanisms. One is by, uh, or there are three mechanisms. One is by making the connective tissue, including the actual penis, more plastic so that it stretches in the short term. Now this lasts for the short, short term. The second is by angiogenesis. That means the creation of new blood vessels in the area, either due to hypoxia or something like that. And by the way, even with the veins, you can also have this, elast this plasticity and elasticity also. So the veins can also become more stretchy and the, the penis is Connected tissue like the corpus cavernosum can become more stretchy. This is a short term effect. The third thing is a, is a very, I mean, not a short term, these are sort of medium term effects. The third thing is a very short term effect, which, yeah, I should mention here, which is edema. You can also produce edema, sort of edema, like a lymphatic fluid stuck in your penis, which is very short term. It lasts like two days. It's a party trick. A lot of porn stars do this. People want to impress a girl, do this, and so on. So, those are the things that you can do. Uh, oh, and, one, and one last thing, you can also change the angle that your penis uh, like uh, points at with the use of weights, which you can use while erect. Now this is getting into details that most people don't know about. This was, as you can tell, I, I really studied this issue in, in extensive detail. There are other things also you can do, by the way. You can increase your semen load volume, so the amount of semen you produce with a simple, simple uh, supplement stack, which I should make a video on, which I didn't come up with. By the way, I didn't come up with anything here. I tried a lot of things, but I didn't come up with anything. So that's one thing you can do. The second thing you can do is um, also you can multiple orgasm as a man without losing your erections. So this is a great subject. You know, I reached a point when I was in my early 20s where I was able to do this almost 10 times in a row uh, over periods of you know hours. And so this really impresses women. It's a huge, great party trick. You can train yourself to do it and so on. So those are the things you can sort of do to enhance your sexual performance other than the two videos I made already, which are about sexual drive and erectile quality. So I'm not gonna talk about the, all of these methods here. I'm just gonna, this is sort of an outline about PE. So the next subject we're going to talk about is what doesn't work? One thing that doesn't work that's very well known is called clamping. Clamping was popularized a lot by Big Gertha on Thunder's Place, but also by a lot of other people. We were using cable clamps to clamp the bottom of the penis while erect in order, number one, to stretch the vascular structure as well as the, the connective tissue in the penis, but more importantly, to cause hypoxia. So some of us were we're doing this for like 20 minutes straight to see if the hypoxia could increase growth factors in the penis and whether this would cause effects. It turned out that clamping did not have great effects. The, the, the worst element of it was that it caused major discoloration of the penis. This can come also from pumping, but basically capillaries at the skin level of the penis burst and discoloration will develop as the blood hardens in, in some connect in the, like the skin or something like that. 
So a lot of former PE people have discolored penises. Some of them like it because just like bodybuilders go on stage, they put on dark tans, it makes you more visible. Some people don't like it. You know, I wasn't a very big fan of it. So, and clamping doesn't work anyway. So I just recommend you guys avoid clamping. And number, uh, number two, the, the, the permanent girth growth that's not fibrosis is not real. Okay, there's no, there's no kind of girth that can be gained that you don't do anything for three years and stays with you unless it's fibrosis. And if it's fibrosis, it will eventually, if it's big enough to matter, like if it increases it by any significant amount, then it'll be enough like over a quarter of an inch, say. It'll be enough to start damaging the function of your penis. So that's something again that you don't want. Finally, what's also not possible is more than two inches, as I said, of, of length gains. Basically, it is not possible to cause more than just that connective tissue stretching. You can cause the, the penis itself to stretch for a short period of time, and it can be elastic, and it could be like that for a short period of time, but if you stop for a year, it'll go back, the, the penis itself will go back to what it was, but the, 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 the attached connective tissue may stay extended about half as much over a period of a number of years. And again, just to repeat, the concerns are discoloration and fibrosis. Other than this, you shouldn't have too many concerns with PE. Now, I want to mention briefly the story of bathmate, which is something that personally offended me and many other people on Thunder's Place when we were there. I remember the day that someone posted a thread about water pumping. I was there, I was on the, you know, probably one of the first few posters on the thread. And probably you guys can find that thread. Um, what happened was, so there was this device called a pump, a penis pump, that was used from the, you know, at least the 70s. What people used to do was get their penis erect, put it in the cylinder, and then create a vacuum with a machine that removes air from the cylinder. The problem with this, so the, number one, the effects of this, again, you're stretching the penis, but instead of clamping, you're not doing it through, I mean, it's causing hypoxia too, because blood is getting stuck there, but you're doing it from the outside rather than the inside out, number one. So it does this kind of stretching thing. It may stretch out the blood vessels. It may cause angiogenesis, the birth of new blood vessels in the area. It may make the actual penis more um, in the short term, a bit longer or a bit wider or so on. And finally, it adds edema or lymphatic fluid, especially if the person is not erect while in it or continues to do it afterwards. So that's what we knew about pumping. And because of that reason, and all of us on Thunder's Place thought the pumping had the least permanent gains. So a lot of us were hanging for hours and hours and hours a day because of Bib. He said he used to hang for 11 hours, so everybody was doing that. You know, some of us used to... Uh, you know, clamp for like 10 sets a day or something like that. I mean, we tried everything and we thought pumping was not very permanent. But another thing that was annoying about pumping was that, or what's now called air pumping, is that it often caused blisters in people until they got used to it. So people just veered away from it. And you could, you could cause too much of a vacuum with that machine. One day, somebody, not myself, somebody who deserves the credit that Bathmate got and the money that they got, came up with this idea. He, I'm not gonna get into too much detail because the video will be too long, but basically he filled the, 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 and by the way, the brand to use is not Bathmate, it's LA Pump. That's what everybody has been using for many years. You don't need to buy that, that company that stole the idea from these guys. But basically a normal pump, you just have a pump, you just don't need the machine. You have a pump, you have a connective, uh, like a tube at the end of it. Basically this guy filled up the pump with water and then connected it to the base of his penis while it was erect, put it inside, and then used the tube to suck out the air and then just detach the tube. For anyone who's ever pumped before, you'll know exactly what that means when you think about it. For those of you who haven't, you go online, search Thunder's Place, water pumping, and you'll find the threads. They'll explain to you how to do it, just like it explained to me how to do it over, you know, I don't know, 50, so many, so many years ago now. But the important thing is that water pumping turned out not to cause blistering, not to cause as strong vacuums, and to be much safer. And what I discovered after my years of experience with this is that water pumping is actually probably one of the healthiest ways to uh, improve penile quality, erectile quality, to maintain gains in the long term and so on with the, with the least amount of damage. Now again, about Bathmate, basically what they did was one of the guys on this thread, I don't know who it was, went and made a really branded, uh, you know, you know, made a pump specifically about water stuff, stole it from the original guy on the thread and popularized it. And people made millions and potentially hundreds of millions of dollars from that product. 
which was stolen from our page. I remember Bathmate coming out about six months later and us being very upset on the on Thunder's place that somebody went and did that without asking everyone else. At the very least, they could have given some credit to the original inventor of the idea. Anyway, the important thing is this. Bathmate is a, you know, BS company. But the point is this. Finally, let me tell you, what is the most efficient way if you're starting out? Like, you don't want to increase your semen volume load. You don't want a multiple orgasm. You don't want to last all night. You don't want, uh, you know... Uh, whatever to change the angle of your penis all you want to do is get the most gains that you can get with the least amount of effort what is the maximal what is the best program this is what it is okay the first thing is you and if you want to do it you should do it sequentially probably what you could do okay the maximum you can do I'll give you a maximum one and like a minimum one the maximum one you could do is this you could begin hanging you could use Bibbs Hanger, although he is most likely a con man and a liar, it works very well. I don't know if he still produces it. You use Bibbs Hanger, there's probably another hanger. You have to be careful that the hanger doesn't cause a, uh, like a blood vessel, like doesn't cause, doesn't prevent your pen the end of your penis from being able to receive blood. And basically use a hanger and you sit in a way in which you're pointing your legs a bit upward. What Bib used to do is do this on his table. So you put his legs on his table so that basically in between your legs, your penis goes as opposite the direction of that connective tissue as possible. It goes the exact opposite direction. In fact, the way Bib used to describe it, which shows that he really did do some of the stuff, it's just that the amount of gains were exaggerated. Um, the way he used to describe it is basically putting it almost between his butt cheeks. So his pelvis was almost facing up and his penis almost the opposite direction. That's the best angle. If you hang light weights, just weights high enough, not 50, 60 pounds like many of us started doing or 100, whatever. No, just like you'll get up to a weight that's, you, you don't want to make, your, make the, the ligament stronger. You just want enough of a weight that causes an ink in exactly that ligament, which you'll feel. And once you get that ache going, you just keep that ache going with, with, this, with this hanging. Now, the more time, unfortunately, the more time you spend on it per day to a degree, the quicker it'll happen. So you can actually have it fully stretched out probably in two months. Once you have it fully stretched out, you can maintain that if you want to with like a once a week, twice a week hanging thing. Or you could use an all day stretcher to keep it stretched with like a vacuum seal. And that'll keep that ligament stretched until it plastically molds itself like that. Once you've done that, even if you stop for 10 years, I can tell you it'll never go back to normal fully. You'll have kept a lot of that length gain. Other than that, uh, and why I say sequentially, you can also pump. Why I say sequentially is because even though pumping is a little bit different and it has a suction at the base of the penis, it still stretches out even that ligament a little bit, especially if you've already stretched it out. So it would be best to do it right after you begin hanging. So, uh, or you're done hanging, I mean. So basically, if you really want length gains, if you just want um, girth gains, there's no reason to hang. And also if you just want erectile quality gains, you, which are huge, by the way, very serious with pumping, then you certainly don't need to hang at all. So in terms of pumping, you should, if you're gonna do it, go to LA Pump, don't donate to this company, Bathmate, because I really don't like what they did. Go to the original pump company that everybody uses from California, LA Pump. You can get a pump, you can get just the pump and the tube. You don't need the machine. Unfortunately, I had a client recently bought the machine accidentally. The machine costs the most part. You don't need that for water pumping. You go to thundersplace.com, you read about how to pump and learn something. You start with the shortest time period you can. So five minutes, 10 minutes, you slowly increase it. You do it twice a week in the beginning, then three times a week. More than four times a week is never good. Having days in between is always good, no matter what. But doing it for more than 20 minutes is inefficient and ineffective. For sure, we've tried it, we've tried six hours, we've tried seven hours, we've tried everything. 20 minutes, you build up to it and you water pump for six months or seven months, probably, you'll reach your maximum medium term gains. What I mean by medium term, if you stop pumping, all of it will go away after about a year. But there will be short term gains that are acute, those are mostly lymphatic fluid and some short-term elastic gains. Then there will be medium-term term stretching and angiogenesis, vascular structure. It'll be much easier for you to get erect, uh, erect quickly. Um, you'll have more sensation in your penis. It'll improve sex so much for you. That stuff will be medium-term. 
after doing it four days a week until you got the results, you can't get any more results for a while, say after a year or so, you could go back to twice a week and probably maintain it for the rest of your life and probably should. Because when you don't use something, you lose it. And a lot of men in their 40s and 50s have less sex, maybe because they're married or whatever, and end up actually losing the ability to use their penile tissue. And I can get into this in another video, but penile tissue, you can't have apoptosis of cells in the penis because it's not being used. So in the body in general, what you don't use, you lose. So even just using the maximum capacity of your penis, so if your erections are always 75%, you're not getting 100%, your penis will actually permanently shrink eventually. So one way to avoid this is by doing pumping twice a week. And it's very healthy. That's what I like about pumping, and that's why I don't mention clamping. Pumping is healthy, it adds value to someone's life, and probably is worth 20 minutes twice a week. I don't do it personally because it's just not worth, I'm not that sexually driven anymore like I was in my early 20s, and I'm not that interested in it. But for those of you that are at all, if you, if you care about that, this is probably very, very valuable to you and you'll probably benefit a lot from hearing this. So this is the short story. I mean, there are other things that one can do. Like I said, the way it's changing the angles, multiple orgasms, uh, semen volume, um, and that's really, and again, the flaccid side was with the all day stretcher, but that's really all there is. Everything else, and by the way, jelking, for those of you that are interested in jelking, pumping is much superior to jelking, for sure. Much less risk of fibrosis, much better angiogenesis, much better erectile quality, everything is better. It's much safer and when it's water pumping and so on. So I hope this was, this is really difficult for me to make a video on the subject because I just know a lot about it and I don't know where to go with it and I know maybe some of you guys don't know that much but some, some of you know a lot. So ask questions down below. If you guys are interested in more videos on the subject, on particular parts of it or whatever, I'll make more videos on it. I spent a lot of time on those forums, learned that a lot of them were liars but I also learned that some things worked and since I haven't done any of that stuff for at least 10 years, I really know what worked. I know what stayed, I know what stayed a year, I know what stayed two years, I know exactly what, what worked. And, and, I, and I, oh, I, sorry, I forgot to mention two things. When pumping, there are two tips that one should know. Not just when pumping, even when hanging. If you heat an area, it will stretch much more. So, what we used to do, some people used to have infrared lights, and some people used to have heating pads around the pump, stuff like that. You can also do this when you're stretching. Uh, when you're hanging, I mean, or even with an all day, all day stretcher, if you're very, you know, into it. But there are, but there are diminishing marginal returns to this. It, uh, everyone uses hot water, but not everybody puts the infrared light lamp on it. Not everybody puts a heating pad on it and so on. The other thing is there are some tips about pumping that I feel uncomfortable discussing publicly like this, which I can talk to clients about or stuff like that, which I already do. And the final thing I want to say is if you're not erect the entire time in the pump, it's useless. Okay? That's important to know. Because many people were sitting with pumps with flask because they, they just get erect, get inside and they think it's fine. And the blood, the blood goes back in and lymphatic fluid fills up and then you end up, end up just with this short term effect. It doesn't cause the long term effect. So important notes. I think this was a useful video, not very organized. I'm sorry guys, ask questions below for video topic ideas and I'll answer more of your questions. Thank you.